<clears throat> tell you one thing. We uh, came here with Coach Holden from Pascagoula. We had uh, been with him down there, and uh, when he uh, left high school there, he won the state championship, then moved over here to uh, coach. He uh, brought uh, Lloyd Brinkman and, uh, and me with him, and uh, we came here 60 years ago this year, 1948. Yep. A day or two ago. Lord, I don't know. You remember that dirt road from Gulfport up to Poplarville? It was gravel, gravel and dirt, and you got five miles out of town, and uh, Theodore Bilbo had a big dream house built out there, and the road was paved out to his house, and then it was dirt the rest of the right, day. Right, it was. We tried to thumb on that road. Yeah, we, there wasn't any traffic. Catch a wagon. We'd stand, yeah, we'd, stay, wagon. we'd stand out there for hours trying to go home. But we had one ace in the hole. The White Eagle bus line always came down that road one time a day, and you could catch it if you couldn't catch it. Well, hell, if you could afford it. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we didn't have money to catch the White Eagle. <laughs> this college uh, had about 600 students in 1948, and uh, it has grown quite a bit. But that included the high school. That included, that's right. Two years of Popperville High Popperville School. Popperville High School. And they had a big farm out here, all out here. Oh, where, yeah. Where, Cow, all, these, where all these sheep, buildings are. They goat. had a farm, and uh, some students uh, uh, made their uh, tuition and uh, room and board by working on the farm and uh, had fresh vegetables and uh, uh, butter and milk. And they always had that stable on that table, Lord. Remember that? Right. Peanut, butter, and syrup. But it hadn't been for that, we'd all start to death. We'd love to see that buddy. Yeah. Uh, let him tell you about the golf course he put out here in the pasture one year. <laughs> well, we had all these guys that claimed they were golfers. So uh, I got some old flags and some poles and put nine holes out in the middle of this pasture. And so, and drew a lime line around the, the, what was a gr would be the green, and so we played that thing. If you could keep from missing cow piles, <laughs> it was it was pretty pretty reckless at times. We lost balls and we didn't know what how to get them. <laughs> yeah, we lived on the second floor of Huff Hall right in the corner where the sidewalk passed underneath. And for some reason, when girls walked by on that walk, a lot of water came from somewhere. I don't know where, but The they... floor above it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it was from the third floor, never from the second floor. <laughs> you guys have any more stories or experiences that you want to share? Well, we just, we really enjoyed our Two years here. Y'all were really the gold dust team, kids. Gold <laughs> dust kids. <laughs> I tell you, I think we both learned how to study here because in high school we did it like most kids. We did just enough to get by. But here, uh, with our off periods and time that we had extra, uh, the teachers were very cooperative. Uh, you could get special help. But I credit being here, uh, learning how to study, and then we can pull on it too. When you were here, well, on, and, uh, and being and being with Co Coach Doby Holen for six years didn't hurt us <laughs> because it really gave us a foundation. Oh, that was heavy. Teach you how to do it the first time right instead of keep doing the same mistakes, and that didn't make make any difference whether it was the. Uh, the uh, classes you were going to or whatever, you want to do it right when you were there. And uh, it kind of, it's really left an imprint on my life. This is the best two years of school I had. I, I can say that also. Uh, and this man was like a father figure to so many uh, boys. And uh, even though we had fathers, they were back at, you know, Pascagoula. But Coach Holden was our father away from home, and uh, he uh, he had a lot of a lot of boys that he was a father to, and that's why so many of them uh, loved him. And I mean, he could get on you pretty rough, couldn't he, Lord? <laughs> oh. 
he could get on you real rough. <laughs> I mean, particularly when you're running a running a locker room that doesn't have any money and you can't buy any new socks, and these guys want to beat you up if they don't get some clean socks. And, and see, and, Lloyd was a manager for our high school team, and he came up here, and he was a manager here for Coach Holden also. So he, he ran the locker room and took care of all the supplies and everything else. So if anybody didn't have anything, they didn't go to Coach Holden. They went to him. They said, how come I hadn't got this? How come I hadn't got that? So he, he They was, didn't know that we didn't have any money. <laughs> One time I, I made the mistake of buying some stuff, and Coach Holden decided that I was going to pay for it. He said, you're just going to have to quit school and go, go to work and pay for it because school don't have any money. And you had no authority to do that, which I'd been doing before, but I guess I must have gotten authority that I wasn't aware of. But uh, I learned a lesson there because he kept me sweating for about a week that I was going to have to leave school to work, work, work to pay this thing off. And he finally, uh, after chewing on me for a week, finally relented and said, okay, we'll figure out how to do it. Well, you did you did it all right, baby, because I tell you what, this guy here is a success story of our generation. He went to Texas, got in the carpet business, made it big, very big. He's our success story. We're proud of him. Well, that, uh, that foundation here didn't hurt me. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. You're welcome, buddy.